Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I thought I would sit down and do it a current events in the online fitness community video for you guys. Get a sip of water, get my radio voice going, let's talk about this. All right, this is important only if you follow the science. Um, and I thought it was fascinating. I do need to dig deeper into the study, but someone asked me about it. It's a study that hit yesterday, I believe. I dug into it and I haven't really looked into a lot of people's responses, but I read over the data and it's kind of a sensational headline because it's saying hey oreo cookies improved lipid profile or cholesterol more than a statin did all right um here's why that's a big deal when that's a little misleading but the person who did it chose oreo cookies based on their hypothesis the researcher for the shock value because they knew it would work um, and the interesting thing is like what this does is number one, it shows that statins aren't always as amazing as we would like them to be for improving lipid profiles. And, and I've even heard cardiologists say that and medical doctors say, look, statins at the individual level aren't always that great at the population level. They tend to do a lot overall, but for the individual person, they are not always as effective or as effective as we would like. And in some cases, not effective at all. In many cases, um, I personally have a close family member who it did help a lot for them. Uh, they have not had another heart attack since being on like Lipitor. But I digress. Back over to what the research look at. The research was looking at ketogenic diets, and that's what I thought was interesting. Um, and I think that is a fantastic one to, to look at because it says a couple things. Number one, it shows that we know that on certain types of diets, statins don't work that well anyways. In other words, any diet that is really high in fat, particularly saturated fat, if you stay on those diets, statins oftentimes, according to my understanding, don't always do much of anything. They don't always have a large benefit because they're not able to fully offset the negatives of the diet regarding that. They usually people have to um, usually reduce that intake. Um, I've even seen like if you look at a bottle of Lipitor, oftentimes it says in the instructions. It says in the instructions, you know, not to take it with a high fat meal because it may literally interfere with the effects of the drug. When people want a, a, usually a ketogenic diet, every meal is a high fat meal. They're eating high fat all the time. Here's what I thought was interesting. And this is also something that a lot of times the keto community doesn't want to admit. They're like, my blood work looks great till you look at their LDL. And sometimes their LDLC, sometimes their other inflammatory markers. It's like, well, your HDL is good. Your triglycerides are low, but your overall lipids are not good. You're still predisposed to atherosclerosis. Okay, and that is because specifically of the, usually the large amount of saturated fat in their diet. And that is not a point of contention. You know, people will say things like, well, dietary cholesterol doesn't always affect uh, blood cholesterol. That's a true statement. And many, and actually the majority of people, it doesn't seem to. It does in some people, but not necessarily the majority, but no one's talking about dietary cholesterol. What we have found is that saturated fats, and this is different for different types of saturated fats, because it's a category, it's not a substance. They absolutely, do impact your LDL, including the different particle sizes. And everybody's, well, it only does the one and it's not a problem. No, it is a problem. And that's the biggest downside you see medically with that sort of diet. If your LDL is still really elevated, and it tends to be if you're eating a lot of saturated fat, you're still predisposed to certain cardiovascular diseases. And there's no, there's no way around that. Yes, you have reduced it by other things. Yes, if your triglycerides are low because you're not eating refined sugars anymore, that, that's a good thing. Like No one's going to say that part's not good, right? Having a high HDL and a low triglyceride is good. That, that is preventative of certain types of cardiac events, not of others. The LDL specifically over the long term is the largest factor in atherosclerosis and that's not my opinion my opinion your opinion is completely irrelevant that is literally the findings of the, the american atherosclerosis society at least a memo on that a few years ago saying we have all the data here it is it is causation 
This is literally the primary cause, not a cofactor. It is the primary cause of atherosclerosis is prolonged elevated LDL. Okay, and we've got the data and the research to show this. This is the problem. So the issue you run into with a lot of these numbers, and this is going to sound messed up, when saturated fat reaches a certain level, not reducing it in your diet is the, is the worst thing you can do. Right? And like anything else, too much is a bad thing. And people on these sort of diets, generally, not always, they go into that range of too much. They take out some other bad stuff, and then they add too much of one of the bad things. And what this, what this is suggestive, when you look at this data that it reduced their LDL and they replaced some of their food with Oreo cookies, is showing that even refined sugar, at this point, replacing some of the saturated fat and then giving you some extra uh, insulin response and carbohydrate, is literally more healthy at that point. And that is the point that they were making with that, that it had a more pronounced effect than the drug that lowers it. Simply replacing some of that fat with carbohydrate, even one of the worst carbohydrates you can consume, is still preferable. In this subcategory of keto dieters, because it was a specific genetic subtype. And we do need to be clear, you can't draw large extrapolations to all people, people with this certain specific gene set regarding lean body mass. Okay, that is that is what they were looking at. Okay, for this subtype, that the saturated fat being this high, even replacing it with junk food will still improve your health markers at this point. More so than not replacing it and taking the statin at least at the individual levels. I mean, it was, it's an interesting study and it, and it's again, says some things about diet type, specifically when genetics are involved of the, literally eating a less bad diet at this point is still going to be more effective than prescribing a pill. And, and I think that was the thing. And it actually kind of knocks down the ability of statins to completely do the job if dietary intervention is not in place. And it also shows that, again, extreme amounts of saturated fat are so bad that replacing it with anything, including Oreo cookies, seems to be preferable at that point. And that is what it was showing. Um, so again, it, it's an interesting piece of data. I mean, make of it what you will. I'm sure other people are going to be discussing it for days and weeks to come. Um, I, I thought it was interesting as someone asked me about it because I didn't know one of my followers asked me. So I'm like, oh, let me go read this study. And I read this study. I'm like, oh my God, okay. I need to hop over and discuss this. I mean, feel free to chime in below. I may have got some points wrong. I only did, again, a, maybe a 15 minute read over of the material, of the data. Um, and thought, you know, again, this is an interesting point to cover in a current event today. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys and gals next time.